uh, Satoshi Labs made a, a slip, Satoshi Labs improvement proposal. And they have basically um, made a collection of over a hundred different blockchains and over a hundred different coins that are a part of the greater Satoshi Labs improvement proposal uh, uh, framework. And, I, and that's the one that Treasure also uses and we already have Treasure. So I feel like it would be really nice if we could settle in on a bit. Um, it doesn't have to be bit 44 or Satoshi Labs improvement proposal with 100 other coins. I think that it can be anything. I'm just throwing that out there as a suggestion. And that we should get all wallets from day one to kind of direct them towards. I think that after URI and uh, QR codes, we should really be looking at wallet seed formats and then have everybody on board. But at any rate, because we haven't decided on that, I didn't put that in this mock-up design. I do with the private key. Um, if you are here and you already have a wallet, you can import the private key or you can scan the QR code. Of course, every QR code for a wallet would have a password, so you would enter the password. I have a receive screen and I have a send screen. Um, basically, the way I feel about it is most people in the NIM ecosystem want to send and receive mosaics. So for send and receiving mosaics, I've been able to enter an address and then here, you can pick whatever mosaic you want. Um, people, the community has been really, really upset that they weren't able to send and receive mosaics. So I've heard that and then made that a core part of this design. Um, the other thing that when we had the wallet, we had a lot of feedback on was harvesting. Everybody wants to harvest on their mobile wallet and there's actually no reason why you can't do it. Um, so I planned in harvesting and then basically I designed a really simple, you cannot mess it up way of doing harvesting on a mobile app. Where I probably remember harvesting has actually been a little bit tricky and before, it's less confusing now, but before was very confusing. So whenever you first have an app, you just have Zim, but it's not harvested, so that you need to register the harvesting uh, contract. And then we will suggest a deterministic. Again, if we have a Satoshi Labs Improvement Proposal 44, then we could also make a deterministic way to create harvesting uh, accounts so that all wallets across the whole NIM universe follow the same way to create private keys and the same way to create delegated harvesting uh, uh, accounts. I think that's really important. That way all wallets are cross compatible. You register that, you have harvesting. Um, it's not just because you register a contract doesn't actually mean you're harvesting. So a lot of people got confused on that and I tried to make it really, really clear here in the design that registering is not the same as harvesting. And so then obviously once they've registered, there's just this button, start harvesting. If people cannot mess that up. So then they have to click on the harvesting button. We should be able to scan the network, find a node with open slots and suggest it for them. Or if they're an advanced user, they can harvest their own. So then they harvest, now they're registered and they're harvesting. The app should remember what node and once an hour or once a day check in in the background to make sure that that node is still harvesting. I'm and raising my hand. Slowly. Yes, yes. Uh, just one I'm moment. raising my hand slowly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. yeah. And uh, in just a second. Um, and then the, the app should check with the node to make sure that it's still harvesting, that it hasn't gone down. If it has gone down, give the user a push notification please check your harvesting. Yes, it's fine. So I think these are great ideas. Now mm. we should use the first meeting to understand how these great ideas can be brought mm. into one process so it doesn't get lost and is discussed at the right moment. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's a bit too early to discuss uh, it to this detail. Okay. Nate, what is your suggestion? How should we approach this kind of uh, good ideas? Um, One second. Do you have uh, any suggestions? I mean, I, I would say 
uh, oh, Jeff going, yeah, I got back on my interwebs. Uh, um, so yeah, I mean, I would say, yeah, we, we don't have to go, I mean, we probably went too deep on some of this stuff earlier. I think mm. that's the level you're kind of going into now. I mean, granted, I missed, I don't know, let's say about two minutes of it. Um, seems good. And then I guess to your point, um, these are perfect things that we can kind of cover. Um, like to your point of like, hey, what, um, you know, seed and looking at Satoshi Labs and barring or using it directly, like these are perfect things that we can like, hey, post some messages mm -hmm. on like the Slack, get some feedback. And then realistically, that most likely probably will turn into um, an improvement proposal and or something related to just general wallet development. Um, I definitely think, you know, quote unquote, standardizing it across, you know, you know, base simple web wallet, mobile wallet, native, whatever. Um, having it um, that common format, just like the QR code format or the URI scheme and all that stuff, right? Like, I think this slots in with that as well. So, mm. um, so anyways, that's kind of, I guess, my feedback that's and good. whatever. So um, I guess- I, Carrie, I would agree yeah. that the order should be URI and then QR and then wallet, basically. Um, that we need to figure out it in that order because they kind of all depend on each other. Yeah, and these things can kind of, Again, we're kind of designing while trying to get towards the start of implementation, but yeah, obviously we got quite a bit of, I mean, it's not like we're gonna design for the next six weeks and not do anything, but um, mm -hmm. we definitely want to, you know, take these next couple of weeks to kind of like get our bearing, have things settle outside the tech side, and then, um, and then, um, start to actually get into like base implementation knowing that, I mean, this is software development, right? Like you don't just nail it the first time. The hope is to get a sound design. So the iterations are, are pretty tight, tighter loops. Um, so anyways, uh, can you continue on? Um, well, I mean, that was okay. I was basically just talking, waiting for you to come in. <laughs> uh, we're actually going to go do a deep uh, go through. I was just, Freaking out because you weren't here, boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you uh, want to take it over from there, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, so definitely, I mean, I guess if you went over, I mean, so like this is definitely like this is how a lot of the group meetings will go, right? We'll have mm -hmm. typically what we'll do is we'll have, um, uh, you know, some base topics that we know we want to cover, and then um, if you know, sometimes it might be like, hey, we only need 20 minutes to cover something real quick, and then that's it, or. Um, and then we want to leave slots so that people who are working on stuff um, that pretty soon will come into the purview of actually development and community participation. So this was, was actually very good timing that you were kind of like, uh, you guys been actively getting this stuff together. And we said like, hey, let's, let's get this first meeting going. So I was like, you know, this is, it kind of, it worked out very nice for this first meeting to have, hey, this is, you know, like, like uh, how this, how you can picture this morphing is uh, probably not in the next meeting or maybe two meetings from now, but in the not too distant future, we'll start to have these slots opened up for demo times. And these demo times could be, hey, this is how things have been progressing. Um, here's kind of like a somewhat functional library and here's somewhat functional UI. And then it could be like, hey, so-and-so popped up in the community and they posted a link to a blog post about a wallet they were just completely building on their own. So we asked them to come in and demo it. Um, that's kind of how these things organically go where we'll spend a chunk of time with purpose and the rest of it kind of like, you know, sharing and Q and A. Um, because it's, it's basically, this is kind of the next level of uh, interest and involvement outside the Slack, right? Um, oh, the other thing which I'll mention, which I forgot to earlier, um, we haven't been actively using it yet, but we're gonna start doing more on the mailing list. Um, so Slack is great for um, synchronous riffing on ideas and questions and setting agendas and stuff. And then for kind of like bigger um, asynchronous communication and topics and news announcements, we'll also be leveraging um, the music groups, uh, the music group, sorry, my baby's pulling some music uh, playing in the background. Um, um, we'll be leveraging the mailing list and the Google groups. Um, so that's just another thing I'll bring up. So we can, um, like we'll be posting the, the kind of, uh, the links to the content from this meeting, uh, both in the Slack and on the, uh, in the mailing list and going from there. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's it. Uh, what else did we have? I think we're kind of in general Q&A now. So yeah, uh, uh, my question then to start off the Q and A would be for, um, for to talk about the URI and the QR code standard 
and then eventually the the wallet standard what would be the best way slack or the, a mailing list or what do you think um i would say so any direct stuff mm -hmm. um post um if it's if it's if, it, if it's kind of like conversational like go ahead and do it in the slack um if it's something like extremely specific based on like the proposal, just do it directly in the, um, um, the comments in the, uh, in the GitHub. Um, so for instance, you might ask a question or make a statement, which then turns into an update of the current proposal, whether you're actually contributing that content or what you post contributes to that content. So think of, um, uh, think of GitHub as like documented, um, either action items or statements of editing to the proposal or contribution. And then Slack is more kind of a written version of what we're doing now, which it has purpose, but it's like a little bit more casual and some people aren't checking it all the time because they can't just sit there and, and track it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's, it's, um, so again, I would say anything that's with purpose relating directly to the proposal, just go ahead and do it directly in the, um, in, on, on the, on the GitHub setup. Um, anything that's kind of more casual, kind of like, a I guess a good example is the other day when you popped in and you're like, Hey, um, should we create working groups? Right. That's kind of like more kind of casual situational, like, Hey, you know, um, these topics are becoming important. Um, mm. should we create separate groups for them? And I was like, no, like they're, they're kind of low level and they're under the umbrella of the client group since they're going to be most you know, effective to it right now or whatever. Right. Um, that's a perfect example. Whereas, Hey, I have a specific point that I want either changed or input. I would like to be to feedback. You can, not to say you can't do it on the Slack and then also do it on the GitHub, but um, the GitHub is kind of like the, let's say the source of truth. And then um, Slack is kind of like for the conversational factor right now. Um, and just kind of, let's say riffing on ideas, sharing, um, sharing links to, to content and stuff. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess. So I I guess my next question would be then, I'm not clear what I should do with this wallet design um, based on what we talked about. Um, so, I mean, I would say, um, you know, post the links, we can start to get some, some, some greater feedback. So, I mean, there's, there's some, I would say there's, there's a series of gating factors, right? They're going to affect into this. And some of the stuff technically can kind of happen in parallel and some stuff cannot. So obviously, you know, as we talked about, there's some gating factors in, hey, in parallel, we can like work through the URI scheme and the QR scheme and set up. Um, we can start to design through the modular approach to quote unquote, the base web wallet. Then there's some actual kind of blocking uh, things that can happen in parallel, but we can't do full implementation. So for instance, um, are we using React for general UI components? Are we using Vue? And then for, for your kind of proposal, when we look at you being um, uh, web, uh, sorry, um, base quote unquote web wallet, where I say purposefully we're, we're guaranteeing to use like web technology, JavaScript, et cetera. For mobile wallets, uh, a question is for this effort, do we want to use web or hybrid technology that is cross-platform or do we want to use Swift and Kotlin and indoor Java, right? There's no wrong answer to it. Um, there is the, the dialogue of like, um, what approach do we want to take to start with and how are we giving up the task and who's going to be like the focused development effort on these. So we can kind of start to do architecture and design. And, um, while we're starting to make some decisions on, Hey, what UI layer are we using? Um, are we using, you know, for mobile native directly or cross platform? Um, so I think those are the next steps. And these are the, these are kind of, um, I guess the action items of questions that we can continue to have conversations about that, um, everyone can kind of start to give their input. Um, if that makes sense. Um, so we have a question from crack the code. So, um, yes, we're working on SDKs. Um, that actually work is already ongoing. Um, I will put the caveat that, um, the JavaScript TypeScript SDK is currently the only, uh, let's say officially supported one. So all the energy is going into that. That is always going to be the leader SDK, at least for the foreseeable future. So for instance, if the decision is made to build a native Kotlin or Java wallet, the Java SDK needs to be brought up to speed, which conversations are starting to happen around that. But 
it's not going to appear for maybe a month or so, right? Um, so yes, SDK stuff's already going on. We've already started. We're um, I can't if I were to make up a percentage that's probably not rooted in reality. I'd say we're probably twenty percent, thirty percent through um, the uh, bison to cow upgrades. Um, and there's two efforts that are going to be going on the base SDK. Um, one effort is just get the functionality going so people can start to use it. Um, the second one, which is related and important, but we're deprioritizing it after getting the base features done, is we're going to be doing some redesign of the actual SDK and um, taking what we've learned over the last you know, uh, 10 months. And um, it, it not, it's, uh, it's not proper to think of it as a rewrite, but we're taking things that were separated out into two different libraries, collapsing it down, doing some cleanup, um, switching some underlying stuff on how the, the, the data objects are actually leveraged uh, via uh, what are referred to as the cat buffers and, um, and the like. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of where things are at. And then again, there's other Java SDK, C Sharp, Python. These things are talked about and floating around, but there's no dedicated focused effort yet. And they will all borrow and, from the JavaScript TypeScript um, implementation. Um, is, uh, any other questions from anyone? Does it answer, Jeff, do you know what to do? Do you have? I'm not exactly clear <laughs> what I'm supposed to do. I, I want to right, so, so send some people to attack, but I don't know the first <coughs> place to go what to do hold on so you had the links the links are quite new uh, to the wallet and you wanted to post them in slack up for discussion with other developers now we are also setting up news groups and so forth floating this around getting getting more feedback as understood so to me, it would be really just sharing the links to the mock-up at the right place, which would be in Slack. That's what I understood. Okay, so the, the links for the mock-up are in Slack. They've been in there for a while. Yeah, so that's, so I mean, so basically I think, um, again, the gating factors mm -hmm. is deciding, and again, these are related, but kind of separate, is for your implementation, um, we can start to have a conversation of what framework do we want to use? And then based on that, um, for instance, some of these UI screens can start to maybe be turned into prototypes without any sort of real functionality, right? So I mean, just spitballing here, let's say, hey, we are using XYZ to build the mobile wallet, right? Um, well, some of those views can actually start to be built with some uh, feedback loop review on how to implement them yet make them generic so other people can use them for their purposes, right? Um, and um, so, um, so yeah, so again, I would say like we have an action item of, that we'll kind of build of like, these are the three, four most pressing questions that we have to start to like make decisions on. Um, and some of that will be, hey, everyone give your feedback. Should we use React or Vue? And then in reality, um, <laughs> the decisions almost, not exclusively, but it's going to highly be made on this person is going to be doing the majority of the development effort and they, them and six other people gave their feedback, but that person's feedback is weighted up significantly higher, right? So for instance, Jeff, if you have a developer who's going to start to implement this like tomorrow and they say, I feel most comfortable building a Swift app with native views, then it's like, okay, this now turns from, um, a generic reusable effort across platforms to an iOS wallet, which is completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And then it goes down that track. Um, if the answer is let's build something that is leverageable across iOS and Android, then we're kind of in the React Native, the Flutter, the et cetera um, conversation, right? And, and that goes down a very similar but different track as far as implementation and uh, design. Um, in the meantime, something that's happening completely in parallel is, hey, the, the URI scheme, QR code scheme, and then the web wallet stuff is going to be just straight JavaScript, right? Um, and uh, so then I guess I'll also point out the caveat, of course, 
if you're going to go native, if the decision is to go native based on resources that are ready to like jump on it, that also ties back to the SDKs. So the Swift SDK would have to be there. I mean, technically you could do some proxy stuff down to like a JavaScript SDK, but obviously that's not optimal. Um, so the, these are the types of questions we're getting into now, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, what my experience is that after building a lot of wallets, what is most important is what I call build the app for the least common denominator of the next developer to take over. So anytime you build an app in um, a language that's not very common, it almost, as soon as that developer leaves, it almost never gets taken over. All these languages are highly common though. That's my point. Yeah. So, so JavaScript, mm. world renowned, uh, right? There's, I don't know, 80 million developers in the world that use JavaScript and Node mm -hmm. and TypeScript now is becoming extremely popular. Swift is the fastest growing language outside of some of the new modern languages. It's ridiculously widely used. Kotlin is the, now the fastest growing language. So whether we choose to use native Java, native Kotlin, or mix of Java libraries that are run in JVM with Kotlin, there is no wrong answer to that. So that's why I'm not necessarily worried of, mm. hey, who's like, let's not care about developer number three. Let's not assume that someone, I mean, the, the goal with this is not to assume that someone's going to work for two weeks and then disappear. If that's the case, they shouldn't be working on it in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's, so let's just assume that like that person might only work for two weeks and disappear. And not knowing that, let's just say that that person who might work two weeks is, is most comfortable with Swift. Again, just using that as an example. If, they, if, if that's the case and everyone says like, okay, boom, let's, let's get the Swift um, SDK going. Um, and let's get a native iOS app, then that, that's the track that can go down. And um, so it's kind of these like parallel kind of forking and merging tracks and we're just gonna have to kind of learn on the fly almost every day, right? So I imagine tonight, tomorrow, next week. Um, so I would say given the way this conversation is going in the Q&A, which is fantastic, let's, let's target weekly meetings for right now then. Because going two weeks without, um, now granted, every day we're having conversations on Slack and whatever, right? That's, that's going to need to happen. Um, but these meetings act as a, just like it's, it's a lot better to meet and work with per people in person. It's a lot better to interact with people in a meeting format like this than it is on Slack solely, right? It's just more productive and interactive. Um, so I'd say like, let's kind of target, um, I mean, if this day and time works for people, great. I'm super flexible. Obviously, the EU folks, it's, it's a little late. Um, for the Asia folks, it's extremely early or to very early, depending on where you're at. Um, so we don't have to decide that right now. So let's say like, hey, um, some takeaways are, um, let's try to stay on, stay on target for weekly meetings. Um, let's answer some of these questions. Let's start um, getting some specifics, balls, balls rolling and editing of the URI and the QR stuff. Jeff, to your point, um, you know, um, the uh, Satoshi Labs improvement stuff that we can reference or leverage. Um, and then these hard questions of, um, not hard to tackle, but hard specific questions of like, what frameworks do we wanna actually start to commit to? Knowing that we're, we don't have to make this decision tomorrow, sooner the better, but eventually you're gonna have to like, you know, let's go, let's, let's start getting implementation done, right? Yeah, I wanna um, go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so um, I guess as a secondary thing for you, that's highly related. Um, if there's some, if there's a, a person you you guys are already thinking of working with or have already talked to and like verbally committed or whatever, start getting them involved so they again their feedback would be weighted up. In like, I like this language, I like this framework. This is what I want to use for the mobile side, right? We know we're using JavaScript and web stuff for like the web-based wallet. That stuff can be leveraged if we're using a cross-platform stuff such as React Native or Flutter or something, right? Um, okay, so my preference would definitely be to use the TypeScript library, the TypeScript SDK, and definitely I agree with React or Vue. Um, I'm very happy with those, um, and I'm quite flexible on them, but I think there's a lot of advantages to doing them. So I guess my question would be, when is the JavaScript library, do we have any kind of timeline when it might be done? Uh, 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 as soon as possible, it won't be this week. So pretty much what we're targeting is um, kind of fast incremental releases. 
Mm-hmm. So um, we can't commit that like something will be out like Friday morning, but as soon as some base functionality, so like the easiest example is transfer of, of, of assets. Like, hey, can you transfer an asset? Second one, um, the new split functionality between uh, assets and namespaces. That's the biggest fundamental breaking change at like the, the SDK level. So mm-hmm. we don't have to say we're not going to release it until we have 100% compatibility with Cal. Um, we obviously want 100% compatibility with Cal like yesterday, but we can say, hey, guess what? Um, it, 20% of it's there. Start using, you know, you can transfer. You can't, you can't register new, new assets yet. Oh, hey, guess what? Uh, 48 hours from now or three days from now, we now have registering of assets and then the association of namespaces. Oh, hey, guess what? We have receipts now. Um, so that type of stuff, that's our current approach is like fast and iterative. And, um, and so we don't have a definitive answer of it's coming I think today is Wednesday, um, actually depending on where you're at in the world, but like, um, we don't, it's not going to be here tomorrow, but maybe by the end of the week we can get some base stuff. Um, they did get some of the first stuff verified of like transfers and, uh, I can't remember what other feature they were messaging about, but, um, so yeah, assume that that's going to be coming, um, by the time we have a next meeting next week and conversations about design and architecture and prototyping and React versus Vue um, and then what we're doing on mobile, um, the basics are all going to be there and leverageable. Okay. Uh, knowing that there's going to be a lot of moving stuff under the covers that should be relatively transparent, right? So once we get compatibility, attention then turns to moving, working under the covers to rework the innards um, to collapse two libraries into one introduce the cat buffers um, and all that stuff. Um, and uh, actually, I was just looking back. I didn't look at questions. So uh, yours asked about uh, more f- uh, focus on URI, QR, URI and QR um, in wallet schema. Um, yes, so that's correct. Like those would be kind of the most immediate kind of, um, let's say, hardened feedback and actual design work. And then, um, again, in parallel, we're kind of, uh, again, making these decisions and questions about framework and uh, modular design approach to kind of the lower level, right? Knowing that we're, you can never nail those things on the first pass, but the more design we can do up front, the quicker the, the, the cycles and uh, iterations can go, in theory. Same at the UI level. Mm-hmm. Um, does anybody else have any questions that they want to jump in with, writing or verbal? Oh, I guess that's it. Um, well, awesome. Well, uh, other than my internet imploding for a couple minutes, um, a good first first kind of kickoff meeting. Um, thanks again for everyone joining and participating and listening. Um, Again, uh, I think this is a good first group to kind of like really target like weekly meetings. So um, I'll make myself as flexible as possible. Uh, Isfan, I'll let you kind of be the decision maker of what's optimal on your end based on the ability to sleep um, over there in Europe and whatnot. Um, and um, we will post, um, it looks like we're going to have because of the internet outage, well, I'll post part one and part two of the recordings. Um, this one has set up uh, a shared note doc, so we will post that as well as the slides. Uh, Jeff, your links are in there as well as on the Slack. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, continue the conversation on the Slack and then expect uh, some conversations. Please participate on the improvement proposals and then um, hope to see you in the next meeting. Yeah, just a, a, a closing remark. I have added a lot of comments to the slides. Um, well, now I will go to bed, but tomorrow I will move it to the notes and then I will float it around and ask uh, everyone to, well, you know, to check it. Maybe I've missed some some parts, but I try to get it to you tomorrow. So um, looking forward to the next meeting. Yep. Thank you for being here, everyone from far away. Great that we could make it at the same moment. Yeah. Bye everyone. Yeah, thank you and good night to some some guys. <laughs> yeah. Bye.